Live now to Bangkok and Steve Gelster, founder and executive director of the Arrest Program. Steve, welcome to the news hour here on Al Jazeera. Are we talking potentially about elephant extinction in a few years' time? Well, with 450,000 left in Africa and 50,000 being killed a year, you put the math together. They're moving faster than ever. So I think extinction is already facing the elephant in the face. We've got to move quickly here. Why are the relevant authorities not able to do something about this? <clears throat> well, they are doing more about it. The law was just strengthened here in Thailand, which is good. It's no longer legal to sell any African ivory. Uh, what really needs to be done, though, is people need to ramp up their will and their ability to go after organized crime, because that's what's behind the trade. Uh, we've seen a lot of seizures of elephant tusks coming through Southeast Asia. Uh, we've not seen really any seizures of uh, wildlife traffickers, I mean big ones, kingpins, and uh, dismantling the whole networks. So why is that not happening? Partly a lack of capacity, but largely because people know that the folks behind this trade are powerful, they've got money, they're linked to some politicians, and so it's difficult for frontline law enforcement officers to go after influential folks unless they have top-level political will to go after organized crime and corruption. Without naming names, Steve, uh, which particular setup are we talking about here is potentially very negative? I mean, are we saying there are corrupt politicians who financially benefit from this? <clears throat> First of all, there's very good officers and there's a lot of good politicians. We're seeing political will improve. We're seeing people care more about this issue here. That's the good news. Uh, the fact of the matter is, though, that there's organized crime groups that straddle the border between Thailand, Laos, Vietnam, and China who have been in place for decades moving wildlife. This isn't a new problem. They've been moving all sorts of species for, for years and years. So to uproot that kind of strong, corrupt infrastructure is not easy. So with so many problems facing the government out here, I mean, drug trade, uh, terrorism, etc., it's not easy to focus them just on wildlife crime. So what we've been trying to show them is that these wildlife trafficking syndicates are oftentimes involved in drug trafficking also. So it makes a lot of sense for them to bring their anti-organized crime units together to target ivory traffickers and other wildlife traffickers too. In that chain of supply and demand, where is the best pinch point for the authorities to target their efforts? It is around, uh, well, basically, that's a good question, and the vulnerable points are in the logistics, uh, the senior logistics parts of the supply chain. So people, uh, subunits, if you will, that are moving the ivory through corrupt channels, through seaports, airports, and across borders. If you want to get more specific, we're talking about parts of Thailand, the Lao-Thai border, the Vietnamese-Lao border, and uh, northern Vietnam up into China. That's where these companies have established connections and infrastructure over the last few decades. Steve Galster, thank you very much.